welcome back to Loopy Mabel Vintage Style Crochet. My name is Jane and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make my latest design this gorgeous ruffle collar which I am modelling for you. It doesn't really go with what I've got on but there you go. This is what we're going to be making today. You can either wear it at the front, tied at the front or you can swivel it round and wear it sideways on or you can even swivel it round and wear it that way on so it's quite versatile and really does keep your neck really cozy and warm it's not as full on as a cowl or a scarf it just simply sits round your neck ties at the front and it's really pretty it's just got that vintage touch to it really simple if you're also new to crochet this only takes a few stitches and it doesn't take very long at all so it's quite simple to do as well. The tutorial is going to be really simple step by step instructions so if you'd like to have a go on making it yourself all you'll need is some double knit yarn and a 4mm crochet hook so I shall see you in a moment. So let's begin on making this gorgeous ruffle collar so the tutorial I'm doing today is to fit just an average size adult neck um, so but obviously you can make it to whatever size neck required um, but mine's just an average size neck so it should fit um, most people I've used the alpaca tweed stylecraft special alpaca tweed double knit yarn which is this is one of the colours I've got and it's it's by Stylecraft and with it being the tweed it's got this gorgeous fleck fleck to it and I just thought that gives it a really nice vintage rustic look and each ball it's a hundred gram balls and each ball has 240 meters or 262 yards now you don't use an awful lot to make the colour but this is how much I've got left out of the two balls after making this collar so it's quite a lot left so let's begin so in this tutorial I'm going to use this yarn again but I'm going to choose a different colour edging and I'm going to choose this gorgeous sage green as the edging for this one so begin on the main section of the collar so for this tutorial to make this ruffle collar we're going to be using a 4mm crochet hook, you need some scissors, a darning needle for sewing in your ends, stitch markers to help you locate the beginning and the end stitch of your rows, if you've, especially if you're new to crochet they are really really useful and a tape measure if you need to measure your work as you're going along. This tutorial is in UK terms so if you're watching from the US please be aware of that. So we're going to start off with a slip knot so just make our slip knot whichever way we feel comfortable with if you're not sure how to do a slip knot or any of the basic crochet stitches I do have tutorials on them if you want to check them out beforehand right so we're going to start off with a chain and we're going to chain but 38 chains plus two so 38 chains plus two and I shall see you when you've got 40 chains in total so I've got 38, I'm just going to do two more, 39 and 40, and we're going to work down into the third chain from our hook. So this does not count as a chain on your hook, so just count down, one, two, three. So we're going to work our first treble into that third chain. So insert your hook, insert your hook into that chain stitch there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and that's your first treble. So if you'd like to place a stitch marker there, just so you can see where your first treble started. And we're just going to work down into the next stitch with another treble. So yarn over, down into that chain, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through again. So yarn over, down into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over pull through two. So we're going to work our way all the way along this chain with trebles like so. So 
so if you want to continue on now and I shall see you when you get somewhere towards the end and we'll go from there so here we are the last few trebles of this row so just complete the last few stitches and don't forget to catch that last chain on the end there like so now you should have 38 stitches now and we're going to work with 38 stitches throughout for this part of the collar so if you need to keep count that's the number you need 38 stitches so what we're going to do now is we're going to chain one and turn and this chain one does not count as a stitch throughout so chain one and turn and we're going to insert our hook into the first stitch like so and work a treble and if you're new to crochet I would recommend you add in your stitch markers just so you don't lose those important stitches on the end which are quite easy to do and then for the rest of the row up until the last stitch we're going to work trebles but we're going to work through the back loop only now if you're not familiar what that means if you turn your work you can see the like V stitches along the top and normally you would insert your hook through both like so in this tutorial we're going to work through the back so we're going to work through the back so we're going to insert our hook through the back loop only like so not the two but the back loop only all the way along and throughout this tutorial so I'll just show you what I mean so yarn over and through the back loop insert your hook and just work your treble as usual inserting into the back loop only like so So if you'd like to work your way all the way along to the last stitch, I shall see you just before the stitch marker and I'll show you how to finish off this row. Right, so I've just got a few more trebles to go through the back loop only, so I hope you've managed to work your way along, picking up that back loop. And here we are at the stitch marker, so that's our last one and that's the one we did at the beginning of the first row and if we didn't put the stitch marker in it is quite easy to lose that stitch so that's why I find it really helpful to put your stitch marker in especially if you are new to crochet and it does show your last stitch there so we know there's one more stitch to go and we're going to remove our stitch marker and we're going to go through both loops of that stitch on the end so just insert your hook through both of those little loops and work your treble so we're going to do that on both ends we're going to work through the, the whole of the stitch and for the rest of the row we're going to work through the back loop only and by working through the the whole of the stitch on either end it keeps our sides lovely and straight so we'll do one more row so it's exactly the same now so chain one and turn and it doesn't count as a stitch so we're going to do our first treble back down into that first stitch like so insert your stitch marker and we're going to work all the way along through the back loop only working trebles to the last stitch on the other end where we work through both loops of that stitch so it really is as simple as that for this section of the collar so do a quick recap so we're going to chain one at the beginning of every row it doesn't count as a stitch and through the, the both loops of that stitch we're going to do a treble then for the following 36 stitches we're going to work through the back loop only with a treble and then on the last one on the end work through both loops on that last stitch with a treble if you want to Continue on like this until you've got 38 rows in total and I shall see you somewhere near the end. 
Right, so I'm just coming to the end of the 38th row. So I'll just finish off these last few trebles. And, over, and there's the last one there. And we're going to go through both parts of that stitch. And complete that treble. And by, by doing that, it keeps our edges lovely and straight and neat. Right, so that's our 38 rows. So we're just now going to fasten off and just pull the yarn through to secure and that completes that section. So I'll just quickly do some measurements for you. So from Side to side, we're looking at eight inches and measurement across from end to end is 15 inches. So that's the measurements before we put the ruffle on. So obviously you don't have to fasten off your yarn here. You can continue on doing the ruffle edging in the same colour, but I like it in the, the two colours. I think it gives it a really lovely vintage feel and look to it so as I say I'm going to go and add this gorgeous sage green to this one before we put the edging on and the ruffles on um, we just need to place our stitch markers at two points either side where the ties are going to go so on one side we need to count down 18, 18 stitches down so if you just count your trebles down so two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen so on the eighteenth one just gonna place my stitch marker there and that's where the tie is going to start on that side and obviously because we're going to be working up and around we're going to place our marker here so again so we just need to count eighteen stitches down here too so just count two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen eighteen so there's our eighteenth one so just going to insert our stitch marker there so we know on when we're coming up and around we know where the ties are going to be it's slightly off center because when we fold the collar over I've just folded it over so it's not quite centre fold one side is slightly longer than the other side because I didn't want them to be like so I wanted to offset the ruffles so that's why it's 18 stitches so just offset the collar slightly right so now we've got our stitch markers in place we know where the ties are going to go when we come to those points right so we're going to start off by adding this gorgeous ruffle so we're going to insert it doesn't really matter what side you pick because either side looks the same so there's no wrong or right side so whichever side you pick will be absolutely fine so we're going to insert our yarn I'm going to choose one of the corners so I'm going to work on this corner here and just insert into the top of that stitch there and attach the yarn and I'm just going to hold on to that end so to begin with we're just going to chain one and that doesn't count as a stitch back down into that very first corner just going to double crochet evenly pick up the stitches along so you just basically insert your hook evenly along and inserting your hook and just picking up double crochets as you go along so Just evenly 
spacing out the stitches. Yep. So just continue inserting your hook all the way along. Don't worry that it's not exact. But just make sure that they're evenly spaced. I'm going to work all the way along with double crochets and I'll see you somewhere around about here and show you how to go around the corner. So when we come to the corner, the last stitch there, we're going to work three double crochets into the same stitch. So one, two and three and that will bring us round and nicely up the sides. So if we've got 18 stitches here where our stitch marker is, we should have 20 stitches here because 18 and 20 makes the 38 that we have had throughout the tutorial. So we should be picking up 20 stitches. So just insert your hook and pick up the 20 stitches and double crochet along. Three, four, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So that's now here at the point where we're going to make the ties. So to make the ties, we're just going to insert our hook into that stitch where the stitch marker is. So take your stitch marker out and double crochet and then we're going to chain 40 so 40 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 37 38 39 and 40 now from this point we're going to make our little pom-pom the -pom, bobble there on the end so we've got our 40 chains, we're now going to chain three. So one, two, three. That's going to class as our first treble. And back down into that stitch there, we're going to work four more incomplete trebles. So down into that stitch there. So one, two, three and four and then yarn over and pull through all five loops on your hook like so and then chain one just to lock that in and then we're going to chain three again and then we're going to work four more incomplete trebles down into that chain that we've just done there the base of that chain there so down into there and work four more incomplete trebles. So one, two, three, and four. And we should have five loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through like so. So you should have something looking like that. And now to create that pom-pom effect, we're just going to bring our hook down to close off that like so and insert our hook into the base of there and work a slip stitch. So just insert your hook, the base and just slip stitch closed and that forms a cute little pom-pom bobble edge on the tie and then we're going to work our way all the way along the end of the tie with slip stitches. I didn't want to do double crochets because it made it a little bit too thick so we're going to slip stitch all the way along back to the end. So we just need to insert our hook now into the next st stitch, yarn over, pull through and then pull through and slip stitch. like so and it can be a little bit fiddly 
but just insert your hook all the way back down these 40 chains like so. So if you just want to work your way with slip stitches all the way along these 40 chains and I shall see you when we get back here. So I've just got a few more slip stitches to the end of this tie. And there we go. And I just think by slip stitching along the chain it just makes for a finer, more delicate tie than if we did double crochet along. So it's much prettier and finer and easier obviously to tie in a bow. So we're just going to work our way along the end of this row now. So just continue with double crochet, inserting your hook in the remaining stitches like so and we're just coming to the last one just insert your hook into that last one we're going to work three double crochets into this last one and this just takes it around the corner for us now we're going to repeat exactly what we did for this edge so we're just going to insert our hook and pick up evenly stitches along with double crochet. So. so if you just want to work your way again all the way to the end again with double crochets, picking up stitches evenly across, I shall see you here. So I've come to the end, so I'm just going to work three double crochets in total into that last stitch. So there's two and there's three. And we're just going to work our way up the side. So we're going to work our way along to that next stitch marker and that's where we'll do our next tie. So we're just going to work our way along with double crochets into the stitches because you can see the stitches on the end. There we go. So we're going to do our tie in this where the stitch marker is placed. So exactly the same as the other side now double crochet into that stitch and then chain 40 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 37, 38, 39 and 40 so we're going to chain 3 more so 1, 2, 3 yarn over and down into that 4th chain from our hook so 1, 2, 3 down into the 4th chain And we're going to work four incomplete trebles, which is yarn over and pull through, then yarn over back down into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through. That's three and four. So we should have again five loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all five, and just chain one to lock that in and then we just go to chain three again so one two three and work four more incomplete trebles down into the base of that chain that we've just done so one two three and four and then yarn over and pull through or five and then we're going to lock that down into position by going back down into where we first started with a slip stitch and that creates a cute little pom-pom and then we're just going to work all the way back down this tie with slip stitches so just if you want to continue on down all the way to the end with slip stitches and I'll just see you round about here and that completes that tie. So we're just going to work all the way down now to complete this side with double crochets. So we're just going to insert our hook into those stitches there. Down to the last one there. So we've come to the end now and obviously we need to do two more into that corner so that gives us the three with the first double crochet that we started with. So we're just going to do two more into that corner. So into that same space, work two more double crochet just to finish off that corner and then we're going to slip stitch 
to the top of that first double crochet that we started with so just insert your hook and slip stitch like so so that's completed our first round and our ties we don't have to fasten off at this point because we're now going to go along this edge this first long edge to create our ruffle so what we're going to do is chain three and that's going to be our first treble and down into that same stitch there we're going to work another four more trebles so four trebles so one two three and four but there'll be five in total including that three chain and we're going to work the next stitch with five trebles so one two three four and five and this is going to create that ruffle effect just like so. So we're going to work all the way along in every stitch along with five trebles in every stitch. So five trebles in every stitch and we're going to work all the way along to this end. So if you want to continue on now I shall see you somewhere around about here and I'll show you how to fasten off. Right so I've just come to the end of this first ripple edge and if you remember when we went round the corners we did three double crochets so I'm just going to finish off this row with my last set of five trebles into that middle of the three double crochets so that's it there one two and three which I've done one there so I'm just going to put five more trebles into that last one there There we go, and I'm just going to slip stitch that closed just to finish it off, like so. And just trim the yarn, and I'm just going to slip stitch it closed, like so, and that just finishes off that ripple. So we're going to do exactly the same we did here along the top edge so we're just going to join our yarn to the corner there so we're going to join it in that the middle one so that's it there and just to reattach the yarn like so And just going to chain three. So we're just going to do four more trebles back down into that space. One, two, three, four. And then exactly like we did on the other side, work five trebles into every stitch. And five, and five more into the next, and I'm just working over that tail of the yarn, so I don't need to sew it in later on. So, as you can see, this is creating our second ruffle. And five more into the next. So 
so we're going to continue along this edge like we did on the side with five trebles in every stitch all the way to the end leaving five trebles in the middle of those three double crochets there and then finishing with a slip stitch to finish off this edge so if you want to work your way all the way along I shall see you somewhere round about here just to finish it off right I've just got to the end of this row and I've come to my three double crochets that we've got on the corner so I'm just going to work a set of five trebles in the first one and finish off with five trebles in that middle one just going to slip stitch now to that next double crochet and cut our yarn pull it through to secure like so so I'm just going to sew in the ends Just by weaving through the back a few times. Right, so we've finished our ends and we're just going to fold it over right side facing and because one side is slightly off center it naturally falls falls short of the other like so and just tie it into a bow for you how amazing are they and that's how easy it is to make your ruffle crochet collar well I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on making this ruffle collar. If you did like this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and there's also a little notification bell. If you click that bell you'll also be kept up to date with all of my videos that I bring out. Um, here's the one we made in the tutorial in edged in the green. So it just shows you you can choose any different colour yarns to make your collar with and it really is a statement piece makes brilliant gifts as well for your friends because it doesn't take too long to make and it doesn't take up an awful lot of yarn which is a bonus too so i hope you enjoyed it uh, there is a pdf pattern as well that you can download and follow along with that too and as i always say it's only crochet practice does make perfect and until the next time please take care and happy crochet